let's talk about worship. My name is Jesse Mwai, and I'm a pastor with Crisis Yansa Ministries in Nairobi, Kenya. I love to worship, and I know you love to worship, and especially those of us who are born again, and Jesus Christ is our Savior and all. We love to worship. We love to come to in the gathering of the saints and to offer our praise and our worship to our God. Worship is something that we do, and sometimes we do it so naturally, but it's also one of the least understood subjects that you find sometimes in the Word of God. And I just want us to take a few moments as we consider the Word of God. Uh, and I want to pick a story that is very familiar to us that you find in John chapter 4. It's a story of the Samaritan woman. Now, Jesus Christ chose to teach probably his most profound uh, teaching on the, on the subject of worship in just a few, a few sentences. But he chooses to teach or to bring this teaching within the context of a sinful woman. He's actually teaching a sinful woman about worship, which should be an encouragement to you and I to know that if he can take time to speak to a sinful, an ordinary sinful woman, then obviously you and I can also be recipients of his grace so that we can be able to worship him. In other words, worship is accessible to every one of us. It's not just for those who are in the, in the temple. It's not just confined to priests who are offering sacrifices. Every one of us can worship. Let me invite you to this conversation as we look at John chapter 4 and we'll just look at one verse there. Verse 23, actually two verses, verse 23 and verse 24. The Bible says, now as part of this conversation, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Those are the words of Jesus Christ to this lady, almost kind of bringing to a close that conversation that they were having about worship. And from this engagement, we can learn a few things and I want to just encapsulate those things into four main things that I find in this particular discourse about worship. The first thing is that worship or the worship of God, the worship of Jehovah, cannot be confined to a geographical location or even a building. Part of that conversation, the Samaritan woman was trying to argue for her position that worship happens on Mount Gerizim. But Jesus Christ challenges her. And in fact, she says that, oh, you Jews say that we must worship in Jerusalem. But then Jesus Christ comes and tells her, no, no, no. A time is coming and has now come when, uh, and this time God is seeking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And he says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In other words, Jesus was trying to teach us something very simple, that worship, true worship, the worship of God cannot be confined to a mountain, cannot be confined to a temple in Jerusalem because God is spirit. Hasn't it been an amazing time for us in these four months, now going to the fifth month, when we've not been able to gather together as worshippers in our places, regular places of worship. Yet, God has given us an opportunity to worship at home or wherever we are with our families. See, if you've been waiting for us to go back to church for you to worship, uh, I think you got it a bit wrong. God is spirit. By the way, my worship of God is no better when I'm doing it in church than when I do it with my family or my, by myself at home. I am no more spiritual or God is no more closer to me while I'm in church than while I'm at home. Wherever we are, to understand God is spirit. He's inviting us to worship. Worship is a beautiful thing. We were created to worship. Let's not wait until we go back to church. Let's worship him wherever we are, uh, whether at home, whether at work, wherever you are, choose, make a decision that I will worship him. The second thing that we learn from this encounter is that true worship stems out of a right theology. Now, when we mention the word theology, a lot of people get scared. Theology really simply stated is the knowledge of God. And Jesus was teaching this woman that worship, true worship, the spirit, spirit of worship must be guided by a right understanding of who God is. See, God has not left us to try and figure him out. You see, God is not so far removed from us that we cannot know him. 
He has revealed himself to us through the pages of the Bible, but ultimately has revealed himself through the coming of the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He came in the flesh so that we may know him. When we see him, we have seen the Father. That's what Jesus Christ told his disciples. And therefore, for me to be a real worshiper, a true worshiper, an authentic worshiper, I must be a student of the word. I must get to know God through the word that he has revealed to us. And he was teaching this woman. In fact, he trying to help her in her theology because she had a little bit of a twisted theology, understanding of who God is. And Jesus was trying to turn her back and tell her, listen, in fact, he says, he told her, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. In other words, you worship, but it is misguided, it is misinformed. Listen, there's a right way to worship. And the right way to worship is to be able to worship through the lenses of the Holy Scriptures. Number three, the other thing that we learn from this encounter is that true worship transforms our lives from the inside out. Amazingly, in this story, this woman came to that well that day, a sinful woman who had had five husbands. She was living with somebody else there and was not even sure whether it was her husband or not. She was of ill repute, coming to the well, uh, you know, at noon, probably ostracized, rejected. Nobody wanted anything to do with her or even to associate with her. But at the end of that encounter, that woman had been transformed because we, and we know that because eventually out of that conversation, she gets a revelation that she's not talking to just another man, that this is the Messiah they have been expecting. And she drops her water jar and runs into the city. She cannot wait to tell the people out there. She was transformed from the inside out. We are not given any more details about what happened to this woman, but one thing we can be sure of, she was never the same after that. Worship, when we come before God in worship, guess what? We are transformed. Because usually in life, we become like what we worship. If I worship God, I become more and more like him. If you want to become more and more like uh, Christ-like, then I'm, I'm invited to a life of worship where I worship him and I become more and more like him. And finally, number four, true worship bears witness to unbelievers. See, this woman not only was she transformed from the inside out, we know that she went and started calling people to come and meet Jesus. See, worshippers are people who bear witness that Jesus saves. It comes naturally out of us. Show me somebody who is not shy. Show me somebody who is not shy to say Jesus is Lord and who bears witness that Jesus Christ saves. And I'll show you a man or a woman who is truly a worshipper. I challenge you in this season in this time, be a worshiper. God is seeking, looking, waiting for you to worship him. If you've already been worshiping, God bless you. May you continue doing so. And until next time, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. Amen.